country something that we can honour and treasure today. Many thanks. Martin Doherty Hughes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ms. and I'm very grateful, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'm uh, grateful to the Honourable Member for Rochdale for not only bringing the debate but stealing my thunder in terms of my Gaelic. You know, his pronunciation is a wee bit better than mine. Um, being a Vice Chair of the All Party Group, I was delighted to be here, as, and I know that you, Madam Deputy Speaker, are also a member of the All Party Group of Ireland, the Irish, and Britain, and the work that you do with the Chair. I think it would be remiss of me also, as probably one of the longest Irish names in history, Marcin Sean O'Dohertego Haid, uh, and for the benefit of Hansard, I have put the spelling on the back of my notes, not to participate today. Uh, I am a grandchild of Irish immigrants on my father's side and great-grandparents on my mother's side. Sarah Timlin uh, from Ballinglen, County Mayo, uh, a very uncommon name uh, in uh, Mayo, if not in, only in the whole of Ireland. Uh, and also John Doherty from Stralongford, which is literally a big long road between Letterkenny uh, and Convoy in County Donegal. A strange and complex family, just like the story of our, our heritage across these islands. Uh, Sarah and John met in Scotland, married back in County Mayo, but back further, uh, Sarah's big brother fell uh, on the Western Front the week before the armistice was actually signed. Uh, and John's family from Donegal, well, that's a completely different matter uh, altogether. But what I have to say about them is that John especially, um, his complexity of his life when he came to Scotland is that he was brought up by a single parent, a mother, uh, uh, Ellen. Uh, she had 15 children and she was designated in the census of 1901, I believe, as illiterate, a stigma, uh, because uh, she only ever spoke uh, Irish. Uh, and that, uh, while she may have been illiterate in English and never spoke English, she was able to bring up 15 children on her own single-handedly in a farm in the middle of Donegal in the early 1900s. And most of her children survived birth, unlike a lot of them, and a lot of them went to the United States and a lot of family now around Philadelphia and in New York. But luckily for me, uh, uh, they made their life in Clyde Bank. I also want to maybe say a few words about the heritage uh, and the sporting activity of the Irish diaspora, not only in my community but across these islands, but specifically in Scotland. Because this year the GAA in Scotland, uh, the Gaelic Athletic Association, celebrates 125 years of existence in Scotland and it's now based in the Clydebank Community Hub, uh, uh, Sports Hub in White Crook, which has a rather large <coughs> Irish diaspora. Uh, and I was delighted that Minister Sean Fleming, TD from uh, Doyle Earn, uh, visited from the Oireachtas yesterday to visit uh, the, the GA in Scotland. And sadly, uh, not able to uh, attend that visit myself. I'm also grateful for the House back in um, 2016 on St Patrick's Day because it actually uh, highlighted and supported my recognition of St Patrick as a, a, a guy from West Dumbartonshire because uh, back at least as far back as the 13th century uh, in the, um, the, the stories of the Celtic saints of Jocelyn of Furness, uh, Jocelyn writes about Patrick being born what, in what is we now know a Roman fort in the village of Old Copatrick uh, and of course the well which was opened, reopened in the 1930s. Now sadly these days it's not lit knock, you don't get thousands of folk coming for a shrine but you know, you're more than welcome to come to Old Copatrick and taste the waters. But also more importantly in the modern times the heritage through the Industrial Revolution, not only in Dumbarton, but then through Clyde Bank, through shipbuilding. And also, uh, I'm also minded by the village of Bowling today by West Dumbartonshire's Heritage and Arts uh, uh, Twitter feed, uh, which mentioned that the ships, the Carn Down, the Clare Castle and the Clare Island were all built in Scott Shipyard in Bowling by the Guinness family, only for one reason, to ship Guinness from Dublin straight to the heart of Glasgow and across the whole of Scotland. But I'm also mindful in these days, uh, only last week we commemorated the 81st anniversary of the worst aerial bombardment in these islands' history, the Clybank Blitz of March 1941. And the Irish diaspora was as much a part of that rebuilding of Clybank and also the fight against national socialism, uh, which crossed all communities, even in the difficulties of the 1940s, uh, uh, which is a great proud moment. I'm also mindful of my, the Western Bartonshire administration, the council, for the first time in the last five years, took the unusual but welcome step to recognise the connections between Western Bartonshire and specifically Letterkenny by the signing of the first ever friendship agreement between a Scottish and an Irish local authority. And I was delighted to be there and to welcome the then yeah. mayor of Letterkenny, uh, who was related, I have to say, uh, which was great. But it's not always a great story. Um, I have to be mindful as the co-chair of the all-party parliamentary group on Gypsy Traveller and Roma, that if you're an Irish traveller, 
St Patrick's Day is tinged with sadness and at the challenges that the Irish traveller community face across these islands in terms of their ethnicity uh, and their lived experience. And I do hope that ministers will take cognizance of that. Uh, maybe just uh, slightly in summing up, uh, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, maybe I want to do ask actually a question of the minister in debate. The complexity and history of these islands, uh, and it's appropriate we mention it today, is an opportunity to build on the strength of diversity uh, uh, and the opportunity for governments across these islands to work together. And that was noted in the St Andrews Agreement. And I just wonder if the Minister, in summing up, will make any uh, notification or give the, give the House an idea about progress on an Irish Language Act or in terms, of, uh, in terms of the New Deal, in terms of opportunities to support and promote the Irish language in uh, Northern Ireland, and also maybe to learn some of that opportunity from Scotland, where we have the, the Gaelic uh, Language Act, which was actually brought forward in 2005 by the Len Labour administration in Holyrood and unanimously supported, and now my own government in Holyrood bringing forward a Scots language um, uh, plan to develop the Scots, a good Scots lead. And Hans are again, I will say that, that it's, there is spelling there, just in case. Uh, because I think it's an opportunity when it comes to Ulster Scots and the opportunity of, of diversity of language is a great opportunity for the whole island of Ireland and, of course, for the whole of these islands to recognise the strength of diversity in language and culture. And again, just thanks to the honourable gentleman for bringing forward this debate today. Karen Smith. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I rise very proud to just.